Have you ever been on the wrong side of the law? Ever, for example, driven home at night after having had a couple of drinks? I suppose there's a very good chance you've never been accused of anything, let alone arrested. But you know, there's also a fairly good chance that you or I could be driving along a road or a highway in a perfectly peaceable manner and be stopped for absolutely no reason whatsoever. If that happened to you, would you know your rights would you know how the Constitution protects you as an individual against the power of the state? Hello again, we're back here on WRKL, the talk station, and guess what? Roadblocks again tonight, here in Massachusetts. First of all, I haven't done anything. I'm driving down the road and I get stopped. No reason at all at a roadblock. And I'm supposed to answer anything and anything? I think that's fair. My question. No, no one's answering my questions. Why should I answer any? She has a problem. When you get into trouble under the Constitution, you have rights, like the right not to be forced to incriminate yourself, the right not to be unreasonably searched, the right to a fair trial, and if you were convicted, the right not to be cruelly or unusually punished. What do all these rights add up to in the real world? In Boston, Massachusetts, the police routinely stop and search cars trying to find drunk drivers. Whoa, whoa, Devin! Pull him over for charging Ellsworth! Under the Constitution, is it legal for the police to do this without any evidence that you have committed a crime? More and more people recognize that something must be done when drunk driving kills nearly 25,000 people every year. The demand for more police action here in Boston is organized by a mother whose son, Michael, was killed by a drunk driver. I'll never get over Mr. Michael. Never. Long as I live. I mean, he was one of my daddies. And he's gone. I'll never know what he would become. If we had Roblox that night, my son might be alive today. I really believe that. He just smoked by me, by 25,000 people every year in this country. It's real and it's happening. And I don't get to be on what the police have to do with us. I really don't. Because there are too many other people getting hurt. Public outrage persuaded the Massachusetts legislature to authorize sobriety roadblocks. In turn, the courts issued strict guidelines to limit what the police can do to drivers who have done nothing wrong. Tonight, stopping every fifth car, the police have only seconds to decide whether to remove the driver and test him further. Follow it with your eyes. Look right at the pencil. Look right at the pencil. Okay. Put your hands behind your back, please. I'm going to arrest you for driving under the influence of alcohol. You have the right to remain silent. Anything you say may be used against you in a court of law. You have the right to talk to a lawyer now and have him with you when questioned. If you cannot afford a lawyer, one will be provided for you. If you do not have a lawyer, you can remain silent until you have talked with one. If you choose to say anything, you can stop at any time that you wish. You understand the peril. These warnings are based on the famous 1966 Supreme Court ruling in the Miranda case. They're intended to protect our Fifth Amendment right not to be forced to incriminate ourselves. Overall, it was a fairly successful night. I mean, we in fact got uh, nine, eight or nine operators off the road to drive around the ambulance. We made two other arrests. The long night, uh, almost 4 a.m., we're still here, and some of these officers are now going to go and be involved in the drug race. But I think it's worth it.